In this series of videos, we're going to see how to upload an image to Firebase Cloud Storage and then link that image to Cloud Fire Store with MVVM and Kotlin. So first of all, a few definitions. We have to remember that Firebase Cloud Storage is where we can store binary objects. And Firebase Cloud Fire Store is a database that can be used to hold JSON data, or in other words, it could hold metadata about the photos that we've uploaded or the files that we've uploaded to Cloud Firestore. Now let's remember an evolution. First, when we wanted to synchronize between our device and the cloud, we had to write it ourselves. Then there came something called Parse from Facebook, which was a cloud-based storage mechanism that was often used with mobile devices. Firebase came out as a competitor to that, and then Google acquired Firebase, and then Google added more to Firebase than just the concept of a database. Around the time this happened, I produced some videos on how to synchronize data from your device to Firebase, and they're some of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel. I got a frequent comment on that, which is, hey, how can I save an image? Because at the time, Firebase was, was synonymous with just a JSON document repository, and JSON is typically character data. We don't tend to think of it as binary data. So I consistently got this request, can you show me how to upload an image? Well, you can't exactly upload an image straight to a JSON storage mechanism, but you can upload it to Firebase Cloud Storage. And then you can get a URL from that, and then you can take that URL and you can put it back into the JSON metadata that you're storing into Firebase Cloud Firestore, in other words, the JSON document repository. Those names are kind of similar, though. So remember, Firebase Cloud Storage, where you put binary data. Firebase Cloud Firestore, a document repository, a JSON NoSQL database, in other words. There are several steps involved, and I'm going to put them into separate videos to keep them nice and concise. First of all, we don't want anyone to be able to upload just any file to our cloud storage, so we want to authenticate to make sure we know who the users are. That will give us a user ID. Now we can authenticate several different ways through Firebase authentication. We can choose email authentication. We can authenticate using OAuth, using something like Google or Facebook login or Twitter login, Microsoft login, several different things we can use in an OAuth provider like that. Once we've authenticated, we can save our specimen. And once we've saved our specimen, what we'll get back is a specimen ID or a document reference that was generated by Firebase to tell us where that specimen data was saved. Once again, this is the metadata about the specimen. In other words, text data, a specimen ID, specimen name, latitude, longitude, so on and so forth. And the unique ID is simply an identifier where Firebase has stored the specimen. So we can take that identifier and then we can save photos that are associated with that specimen. Now this is a one-to-many relationship. So we're essentially going to tie all of those photos back to that specimen ID that was generated by Firebase. And if we want to come back later and update the photo metadata, we can update it in reference to both the specimen ID and a photo ID that gets generated. So the photo ID is where this photo lives within the realm of the specimen on Firebase. We can take that photo ID and we can take the user ID and then we can upload an image to Firebase Cloud Storage using that user ID and the photo ID. Once we've done that, we get back a public URI. We can take that public URI and we can go back and update our photo metadata to say, hey, here's where that photo was saved. So it's a little bit tricky only because it's a series of sequential steps where we save specimen, and if that's successful, we save the photo metadata. If that's successful, we upload the image. If that's successful, we go back and we update the photo metadata with the location of the image. Each one of these has to be successful in sequence for the whole operation to work. If one fails, we're going to need to think of an alternative path, maybe try again, roll back, or look into the failure message. But either way, we're going to have to do this in this sequence of steps. So I encourage you to kind of keep this slide handy as I'm going through the other presentations, because when we're on the on success for the save photo metadata, it makes it easier to understand how that fits into this whole sequence. As a matter of fact, it's a good idea to come back now and remember how our Firebase Cloud Firestore works. We remember that we have a root, and then under that we have a collection. And the collection is a series of specimens where a specimen is essentially a JSON document that describes that specimen. Now, each of these specimens can have further collections. And in our case, this further collection is a collection of photos. 
In each of those photos is an individual JSON object that represents a photo. When we first upload the metadata, we don't know what the public URI for the image will be because we haven't yet uploaded the image. When we upload the image, we get that public URI, and then we can come back and we can update these JSON documents that are on the right. I mentioned we'll have a sequence of videos to make this happen, and this is roughly what that sequence of videos will look like. First of all, enable Firebase authentication, first with email, and then with Google. Next, we're going to save our specimen to Cloud Firestore, which we've actually already done that in a previous video, so we can consider those two nearly complete as soon as I get through the authentication. What we do need to do, though, is we need to add the photo data class, which will store the metadata about the photo, and then we need to associate that photo with our specimen. So we'll enhance that beyond what we did in our last video. Next, we're going to upload the image to Firebase Cloud Storage. That will give us a URI where we can go back and update Cloud Firestore with that URI. And then we can use that photo as well as the user ID to make private user directories on Firebase Cloud Storage and assure that users can only read to or write to their own private directory. So without further ado, let's get started. 